Let's open our Bibles to the book of Philippians, amen. Philippians chapter 3, we read from verse 12 to 14. That's our text today. And today, by God's grace, we're looking at take hold of what is ahead, amen. Brothers and sisters, there are great things ahead, and we want to take hold of them. Let's open our Bibles to Philippians 3, 12 to 14. Yes, please. Amen. Let's, we'll just give a one quick second. Um, we have another mic here. You can try this one. Okay. Amen. Not that I have already attained. Yes. Or I'm already perfected. But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. I mean, the Lord, God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. There's no doubt that God has not been good to us. God has been good to us. Look all around you. You are healthy. You are strong. All through the COVID, COVID is almost two years right now. You are not among the numbers that they said died of COVID-19. You are not among those who have said that have lost everything and could not recover anymore. God has kept you. It's no doubt that God has been so good to you. For those who were single last year, they were sitting, sitting down alone, eating other people's rice and other people's eba. But today, they can eat their own food. Today, by God's grace, those who were last year could say, oh, where are my children? Today, they are carrying their own children. Last year, February, if you have told some families that by this year, that you'll be doing your own baby dedication, you will be like a dream. My wife told me something. She said, everything God spoke to Ross. That she, even when she was trying to look into, look into it ahead, now that we are walking in it, it's not the same. When we were thinking about, oh, that day we're going to carry our child, it's different from you carrying it yourself. You cannot fathom how his face was going to look like. You cannot fathom how God is going to be, how that thing is going to be. But the truth is this, God has been good. Despite everything I've said today, the good things God has done for you, the favor, the job, the promotion, the elevation. Brothers and sisters, there's still great things ahead. Greater things are ahead of us. And that's what we want to first focus on today. Even nature reveals this truth. Even nature reveals this truth. You sow a, a seed, it grows. Is that not something you rejoice over? But when it grows, do you stop there? You keep looking forward to eat of the fruit. And when you even eat of the fruit, do you stop there? You want to even eat more from it. Amen. Even nature shows us that there's something greater. The first time you planted that mango tree and it, it bore 10 fruits, you were so happy that the mango tree you planted three or five years ago has given you fruit. But you are, are you still looking for those 10 fruits? You are still looking forward to hundreds and thousands of more fruits from that tree. You wake up in the morning, you thank God that you are alive. But do you just sit on your bed? No, you wake up and keep going, believing that today I'm going to attain great things. Despite, you just thank God and say, God, I thank you for what you did, but you're still looking forward ahead for greater things. And one of the few things, many of, we've, many of the, one of the few times we've seen God become angry is when man becomes complacent. That's one of the few times we've seen God angry. Let's open our Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 13, 14 to 19. In 2 Kings, chapter 13, is a story, maybe because of our time, I will just quickly paraphrase it. Um, oh, let's read it, let's read it, Amen. This is King, um, uh, yeah, New King is good. Yes, you can read that, please. Elijah had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Yes. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him. Yes. And wept over his face and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and their horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it, and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. And he said, Open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot! And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the lost deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Verse 18. Then he said, Take the arrows. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you have destroyed it. But now you'll strike Syria only three times. Amen. God just showed himself in this man's life. And this king 
Honestly, how he knew what to tell Elisha, is on, we're not sure. These words, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel, and um, the chariots of Israel, was spoken by Elisha himself when Elijah was being taken away. And that's how he received the double portion of the anointing of Elijah. And now, this king, Joash, was also saying this very word to so his face. And he said, you know what, I'm willing to transfer their blessing unto you. But King Joash limited himself by striking only three times. And that made Elisha angry and said, why did you do it just three times? You could have just keep going and going and you will know that you will defeat them completely and they will not, none of them will be around anymore. Brothers and sisters, one thing that makes God angry is that many of us become complacent in where we found ourselves. Some people think that North America is the only thing, and they come to North America, and they're not thinking of anything else again. Some people think that having that child is the only thing, and they have now had a child, and they say, you know, there's no need for me to pray anymore. Some people have even gotten that job, and they think that this job, oh, this is my dream job. There's nothing beyond this. Brothers and sisters, there's always something beyond what you have today. Solomon thought he was the wealthiest man and the wisest man of all ages. But Bible Jesus Christ said, there's one wiser than Solomon, and he is here with you. Even more Solomon in his wisdom had somebody that surpassed him. No matter what you think you have, no matter where you think you have attained, there's still something greater ahead. And you sitting down in the place of complacency is actually a thing that God says woe unto you. Let's open our Bibles to Amos chapter 6 verse 1. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. Woe Amen. to you who are at ease in Zion. Jesus, God is speaking there. Woe to you who are at ease in Zion. And trust in Mount Samaria. Yes. Notable persons. Yes. In the chief nation. Yes. To whom the house of Israel comes. Amen. Those who think that you know I'm settled. There's no need to pray anymore. The demons that I dealt with are now perished. Don't need for me to fight for anymore. Brothers and sisters, we need to fight. If you look at the parable of Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew chapter 25, 26 to 27... When he gave one a bag of money, he gave one two bags of money, he gave one five bags of money. The Bible said that the, when he came back, he told that one that you know that I'm a shrewd and a wicked master. You know that I want to reap where I did not sow. Why did you not multiply it? Brothers and sisters, no matter what you have, God wants you to multiply it. Yes, you have one. There's still seven ahead, behind. Samuel came as one, but there's still six more. He had six more brothers. Uh, no, six more siblings. We don't know if they are only boys. But he had six more siblings. Yes, you have Isaac, but there's still Jacob behind and the 12 tribe of Israel. So don't just look at where you are today. There's something much more ahead. I'll tell you when man fell in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis chapter 3, man fell to a place that was so low. We were created to be gods on earth. Let's open our Bible to Psalm 82 verse 6. Psalm 82 verse 6. I said, I said, you are gods. You are gods. And all of you are children of the Most and High. And all of you are children of the Most High. But are we living as gods? No. Are we striving as gods? No. No matter where you think you are, there's still a lot to you to come out. Brothers and sisters, yes, I remember, I remember when I was talking to my aunt in Ireland, we, we, we were talking about when we were in Kano, in Gandu Olubausa, when I would go and take beans from my parents and bring it to our house, when I would steal from beans from her and take it to school, and all things like that, and we were laughing. And at that time, if somebody had told us that we ourselves we sit down to say we want to bless people, we would say, both of us actually acknowledge that no, we will not believe it. But I will still tell you, wherever we think we are, there's still lots ahead of us. I was watching um, a... Um, um, a progression of, of the companies in the United States, and I saw that um, Tesla worth over $42 million, billion. And to me, that's a lot of money. And I was amazed, like, wow, this guy has a lot of money. And I saw on that one, over 700 billion. The one that had $42 billion thought he has arrived, not knowing the sense. Somebody else that even has more. How many for the two will you see in 700? So don't even think where you think you are. You think, oh, I'm the richest man. Brothers and sisters, there's still more to cover. Here on earth, we think the most glorious thing here on earth is our gold. So if you think this is the best you can offer or you can get, there's still more. And the least in heaven is what? Gold. Will any of you put tar on your, on your neck? Coal tar. No, none of us will. 
Toy is not something we want. It's a dirt. Something we don't want to look at. But in heaven, the Bible said that the streets are made with gold. That's what God himself made for us. The streets are tarred with gold. In the book of Revelation chapter 20. Let's open it to Revelation 21, 21. Revelation chapter 21, verse 21. The 12 gates. The 12 gates. Were 12 pearls. Were 12 pearls. Each individual gate. Each individual gate. Was of one pearl. Yes. And the street of the city. Yes. Was pure gold. Was pure gold. Like transparent glass. Like transparent glass. This is not even 12 carat or 21 or whatever. This is so pure that it's as transparent as glass. So whatever you think you have, there's still more to be attained. That's one thing we just need to understand. Jesus Christ said in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12, he said, greater things will you do. Brothers and sisters, have you done greater than Jesus? Many of us have not even done as much as even the prophets, not to even speak about Jesus. So we still have a lot to do. The Christian part has lots, room, lots of room for improvement. In Christianity, there's room for overtaking. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 18, Proverbs 4, 18, he said the path of a righteous man is like a shining light that keeps getting brighter and brighter under the day of perfection. Yes, you, were bright, you are bright now, but by tomorrow, God wants you to be brighter than what you are yesterday. And your tomorrow to be better than your today. That's what God expects of you. The path of a Christian is supposed to be getting brighter and brighter daily. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 20, verse 16, 26, he said, the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. Why? When they first got there, they thought that we have arrived. There's nobody that can overtake us anymore. Not knowing that there are people who are coming behind who can overtake you. Nothing that you think you've done that has never been done before. So now that we have said this, all this, the one million dollar question in our heart should be, how do I take hold of what is ahead? How do I possess my possession in the glory of redemption? How do I make my yesterday look like a small thing to today? How do I make sure that I, I, by in the end of my life, I will be like Paul who said, I've been poured out like an offering to God? Or will you go to your grave still filled with many things inside of you? Miles Moron once said, he said, the graveyard is the most precious place. It's more precious than the oil fields and the gold mines. Why? In the, gold, in, the, in the graveyard, there are a lot of books that will have been written that were locked in people's heads. There were a lot of ideas that are in people's hearts that will have made so much money, but they never brought it to fruition. Why? They, didn't, they did not reach forward to take hold of it. So now, what, how do we take hold of what is ahead? Let's go back to our text, Philippians chapter 3, 12 to 14. In that passage, we'll see some steps that Paul, Apostle Paul, gave for us. Let's go back to uh, Philippians 3, 12 to 14. Not that I have already, sorry, not that I have already attained. Yes. Or am I already perfected? Yes. But I press on, that Amen. I may lay hold of that for which Christ. Amen. Let us just stop there. The first mindset is this. You must have the mindset of there's still more ahead. Paul said, not that I've already attained. He looked at everything that he think he has, and he said, this is nothing. There's more ahead. A man who thinks he has arrived will be a man who will not go anywhere anymore. If you have reached home, if you are driving, and you go to a place, and you call that place home, will you move any further? No, because you feel like that's your home. Then, this is my home, this is where I need to stay. But if you know that there's something better ahead, you will keep moving. So the first way to take hold of what is ahead is have the mindset of there's much more ahead. Have that mindset like Paul said. Not that I've already attained. Whatever you think you have, look at it and say, not that I have already have it. Yes, you are happy. Your husband is by your side. Your wife is by your side. Your child is by your side. Still tell yourself, not that all these things are, have already attained them in fullness. That's what we need to understand. There's much more to be covered. Because at times when people become complacent, that's what distracts them, that's what blinds them, that there's more to be done. So people think that, oh, yes, I have this, I have that. But not knowing that what you think you have, some other people use it as just, you know, as just a plaything. Let's open our Bibles of Philippians chapter 3, 4 to 8. You can see 
how much more Paul attained in, in his own natural life, and yet he considered all those things as garbage. Philippians chapter 3, 4 to 8. If you're there, you can read, please. Though I also might have confidence in yeah. the flesh. Yes. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I am also. Amen. So he's saying, if you think you are somebody that you should be reckoned with, I should be more reckoned with than any of you. And let's see what, why you should be more reckoned with. Let's go on. Circumcised the eighth day. Circumcised on the eighth day. He was not circumcised on the 20th, on the 10th. He was circumcised on the eighth day as the scripture acknowledged, yes? Of the stock of Israel. He was of the stock of Israel. Of the tribe of Je Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin. The Hebrew of the Hebrews. Hebrew of the Hebrews, yes? Concerning the law, a Pharisee. If you want to talk about the law, is a Pharisee, a teacher of the law itself. Go on. Con concerning zeal. When you're talking about zeal, what does he have? the church. He went out to persecute the church. He was not afraid. Yes? Concerning the righteousness. If you're talking about righteousness, what which, does he say here? Which is the law blameless. He's blameless. Nobody can say he has ever stolen anything. Nobody can say he has lied. Nobody can say he has um, uh, dishonored his parents. He's blameless. But, but what things were gained to me? But all, th the, but, yes? This I have counted loss for Christ. I counted all those things. I didn't see them as something that I need to say, oh, I have attained it, so I need no more. Let's read verse 8. Yes, indeed. Yes. I also count all things lost for the excellence yes. of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Yes. For whom I have suffered yes. the loss of all things. Yes. And count them as rubbish. Yes. That I may gain Christ. That I may gain Christ. Everything people will have boasted about. I'm a stock of the Jews. I'm Hebrew of the Hebrews. Circumcised on the eighth day. Concerning the law, I'm blameless. Concerning perfection, I've done everything. Yet he counted all this as loss. The first way for you to attain what is ahead is whatever you think you have gained, you must look at it as something that is not. No matter what position you are. If you say, oh, God, I thank you for I work a job. I'm employed in a place where I'm paid six digits. I'm paid $200,000. Yes, you can be paid $200,000. But who is paying you? Somebody else is paying you. So you're not even the one paying... The person that is paying somebody $200,000, do you think he has less than $200,000? He himself, out of his abundance, is paying some you $200,000. So if you are saying, oh, I have that job of $200,000, there's somebody who has more than $200,000. Uh, many years ago, I was watching uh, BET, and they said, um, um, my crib or something, like, I forgot the name of the show, and somebody has a house with 50 rooms, Rooms. And yet, some people look at, um, you have four rooms. You are bragging that I have a house. Somebody has 50 rooms. Go to the um, Buckingham Palace. I forgot right now how many rooms they say. Over 200 rooms in Buckingham Palace. Go to White House. There are some rooms, they will tell you that nobody has reached there in years. These are places, and yet, you are saying, I have, four, I have four rooms in my house. Oh, my house is huge. Go to Buckingham Palace. If you want to brag, be the queen and brag. Brothers and sisters, whatever you think you have, just the, the only way for you to attain even more is for you to see them as nothing. Don't see that, that you have attained anything. Imagine Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 to 5, he was speaking of himself in that passage. He said, I know of a man 13 years ago, either in the body or in the flesh, I do not know. But the things he saw and the things he heard, should not, people should not say it anymore. He saw God in his raw form. Let me tell you, heaven is beyond what many of us comprehend. If God really shows us what heaven is like, we will be terrified. The Bible said there were four living creatures standing in heaven. Those four living creatures, both of them, all of them have four faces. Not four heads. Four faces. If they are looking at you from here, they have the face of a man. If you go here, they have the face of an ox. If you go here, they have the face of an eagle. If you go here, they have the face of a lion. Will that not scare you? And yet, these are one of the creatures in heaven. And this is not the whole thing in heaven. The Bible said the things Paul heard, the things he saw, it is not, man is not permitted to tell it again. That's why when you see people say, I saw Jesus last night, he told me to go and tell my people, and this is what I saw in heaven. They, they have not even seen the real thing. The real thing, you will not be permitted to say it. That's how heaven is. And yet, Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 said, I, that I may know him. Honestly, how can you see God in his raw form and yet still say that I may know him? 
is because he was a man who is reaching forward. He was trying to take hold of what is ahead. A man who knew that what I have done is be... See, Paul was not among the twelve. And yet, he did more than the twelve. If I ask you to name all the apostles, those the twelve, not counting Judas, name the eleven without counting Judas, you will hear names like Judas, not Iscariot. Did you hear his name anymore? There's Matthew. Do you hear his name anymore? There's um, Simon. Do you hear his name anymore? The only ones you hear is um, Peter, James, John. And John, before they even started doing anything, they cut out of his head. But Peter, the one who did not see Jesus Christ, who, who did not walk with uh, Paul, who did not walk with Jesus Christ, was able to attain. Even Paul, Peter said, the words of Paul are, need to be studied with wisdom. He himself acknowledged. The one who walked with Jesus, who told Jesus, you are the son of God. And Jesus Christ said, nobody has revealed this to you except God. Yet still spoke of a man who did not work with Jesus as he has done great things. Brothers and sisters, the reason why he was able to attain that level was because he saw what, whatever he is today as small. He was looking forward to what is ahead. We must learn to change our mindset from I have arrived to there's more ahead. We must learn to change our mindset from I am, there's nothing under the sun. You must learn to change your mindset. Whatever you have, there's nothing. There are people who want that cars um, customized. So you go into the car lot, go and buy $50,000 car. It's just, it's not the, the only thing. There's nothing only under the sun. Whatever you think you've done, people have done, ahead, have done it before you. Yesterday, it was yesterday or two days ago, we were talking to the kids, and I, I was telling them that, look at grandma. You think grandma is old? Look at her when she was young. In her own time, she was a prime. She was a manager. She was working with people. She, had, she was received her words, and she did all that. To her, at that time, she did it. But now, she, we look back at what she attained, and we say, ew. Now, the house that her husband built, that he, he called a glorious house. Now, the grandchildren will stay there. You say, do you want to live here? You say, no, I don't want to live in grandpa's house. I want to go and live in my own father's house. Because you can see that his own father's house is even better than what grandpa thought it was better at that time. But at that time, that was the house. Nobody will not pass that house and not take a photo of it. But now everybody passed the house and said there's a better one in front. So no matter where you think you are, we need to remember there's nothing new under the sun. I have the mindset of, look to me, it is by God's grace I have attained all these things. That's why I hate it when I hear people say, oh, I got this anointing because I fasted for 40 days. Brothers and sisters, that is never true. It's by God's grace we are standing. Because of our time, the second um, step by which we can attain what is ahead, you must, you must learn to forget the past. Let's read um, that Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. So, uh, verse 12, sorry. Sorry. Yes. Not that I have already attained. Yes. Or I'm already perfected. Yes. But I press on. But I press on. That I may lay hold of, of that for which Christ Jesus yes. has also laid hold of me. Yeah, go on. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things Amen. which are behind. One thing I do is I keep forgetting which are behind and reaching forward to those things that are ahead. He keeps forgetting it. You must learn to forget yesterday. Those who hold on to yesterday cannot move on today. Apostle Paul has given us that second step, also in this same passage. You must learn to forget the past. Our past failures, our past successes can stand as hindrance to today's success. Your past, your yesterday's success can be an hindrance to your today's success. So don't think that like um, the pastor Emmanuel Abi said in one of his ministrations, while God moved yesterday, I think that was last week when he was teaching, it's not the same way God will move today. Last week God told you that go and stay in um, the east side and wave your hand and things will move for you. Don't think that that's how he's going to do it again this year. This year, God might not even ask you to sit. He might ask you, just sit down where you are. And another time I tell you, I want to literally go and fight. There are times God won war without people fighting. There are times he told them, go and fight. And he, was, he himself was hauling um, for, um, brimstones and uh, uh, hailstones from heaven. He was fighting alongside. There are times God just tells you different things. So don't hold on to yesterday. 
And that's why I always tell my wife, there are people who do things one time and it worked. There was an event somebody did that became, everybody said, wow, this is good. And the person did it again. And I told my wife this thing, that the first time I know that God well, I told him to do it, but I'm sure God did not tell him to do it the second time. That's why many, most of us want to do things annually. Because last year God told you, pray 10 days between the April 10 and April, April 20. And you got a deliverance. And again, you not think that next year I would, that's what I would do. It could only be for that time. God might be asking you to do something else in the next year. Don't allow your past failures, your past successes be an hindrance. You need to wait afresh for that fresh word from God. Let's open our Bible to so Isaiah chapter 54 verse 4. Isaiah 54 verse 4. Do not fear. Yes, do not fear. For you will not be ashamed. For you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced. Yes. For you will not be put to shame. Yes. For you will forget the shame of your youth. Yes. And will not remember the reproach of your widowhood Amen. anymore. Amen. God is admonishing us not to allow our past failures to hinder us. Some of us have tried it first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year. And you're saying, God, when, I, when is it going to happen? But God is saying, don't give up. Even if you read the book of Numbers chapter 11, Numbers 11, 5 to 6, the children of Israel could not see her ahead of them. Why? They were holding on to the cucumber and the fish. They were eating in slavery. Honestly, these people need weeping. Those people in Israel, those days. How can you compare when you were in prison to when you are free? You are free and you are eating manna and you are complaining. I know, I remember as you have like gone back to Egypt. Let's read Numbers 11, 5 to 6. We remember the fish we, which we ate freely in Egypt. Yes. The cucumbers. Yes. The melons. Yes. The leeks. The onions and the garlic. But now our old bean is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Amen. You can imagine. They ate kukumba in prison. The next day, the, the slave master will whip you. They ate leeks, onions. And now you are free. Nobody is disturbing you. You are eating manna. You are saying, oh, I, I remember when I used to eat in prison. Many of us, we have allowed the success of yesterday to hinder us from moving ahead today. We think, and to be honest, those who start their own business do more work than those who work for people. Because you never have your own free time. I, I, I said this during the Bible study, a man I knew many years ago, a friend to my wife's family, he lost his job as a computer, I don't know what he was doing then, but he had to start his own business. But now he's working, yes, he's working more than he did when he was employed, but he has more money now. But he had to do more. So if he had said, oh, I remember I only go to work nine to five, and I get uh, six digits, I, I'm pay, I was paid $100,000. Now I'm, 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 working, I'm working 24 hours, but I have one million. Don't you think that's foolishness? But that's what many of us are doing. We are holding on to the success of, of the past, and it's hindering us from moving ahead. Those who hold on to yesterday cannot receive what is in today. If, you have, if I give you something in your hand right now, and I tell you that that same hand, I want to use it to give you another one. It's either you drop what I've already given you before you can receive what I'm going to give you right now. Because if you keep holding on to that which you have, you can't get the new one. Jesus Christ said, nobody sews a new cloth on a, on a, on a old cloth. It will tear. Nobody put a new wine into an old wine skin. You need to make everything new. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Isaiah 43, 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Can't you see it? You need to let go of what you are holding on yesterday. I know that there's a better thing ahead. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. For those who are writing, number three step by which we can attain what is ahead of us is knowing you yourself, you need to know there's something greater ahead of you. You need to acknowledge, you need to know there's something ahead. Paul said, I am reaching forward to the things ahead. I'm trying to, I know there's something better than today. Yes, God has blessed me, but I'm working with people and I have to clean them up before I, I eat. But I know there's something ahead. I can do better. Then I will live a life. Very soon, I'm going to enter a realm that I don't not have to do those ones anymore. That's what God is saying. Let's open our Bibles to Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. 
And for you to be able to know what is good ahead of you, you need to study the scriptures. All the blessings God has in stock for you are embedded, are, are hidden. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs, it said that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the honor of kings to do what? To search it out. God concealed everything in the Bible, but you must take the step to dig out and see what is in there. Let's see what Daniel did in nine, uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. In the first year of his reign, yes. I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that it would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Amen. You can see Daniel understood that we are only supposed to be in this um, slavery for 70 years. Now that he knew that, he was now looking forward to something better. He understood from the studying of the scriptures that there's something better for me. We have been in this slavery for 70 years, but I know after the 70 years, God is saying, he will take us out. You must know that there's something ahead. And in the year 2022 and beyond, I want us to give ourselves to the study of the word. Don't wait for any pastor to tell you what God has in store for you. It is only a bastard that will ask his own brother to ask the father of what he has in store for him. A son should have access to his father and say, Daddy, what do you have for me? Don't have to wait to your brother and say, Brother, go and me ask Daddy. And that's what most of us are doing. We are meeting the prophets who are, same, who are brothers with us and saying, what is God saying about me? I'm not trying to say there's no, the place of prophets are not there. There's a place for prophets, but God does not want us to be ignorant. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13, he said, I, concerning the resurrection, I do not want you to be ignorant. Romans chapter 11 verse 25, he said, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning the, um, the, the, the Jews. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1, he said, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning the spiritual gift. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, he said, I do not want you to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Let's take advantage of you. God does not want you to be ignorant in any of those realms. He wants you to actually open your eyes. He wants you to search like I said, many people say, oh, North America, there's no problem. See, if you read the book, um, Rebecca Brown, um, he, came, he came to save the capitalists free, you will understand the manipulation and the level of witchcraft in North America. It is higher than Africa. The witchcraft in Africa is still underground. The witchcraft in uh, North America is actually established. There are some disciplines. The same way in Africa, they'll tell you that before you become a son, senior advocate of Nigeria, there's a high chance that you must be a member of the occultic. It is a wide known thing that most of the members are members of the occultic. Likewise, in the medical field in North America, you must be a witch to be a part of them too. That is why you have a child, you don't even know where your, the placenta of your child is going to. They already have it organized where they are dealing and they're destroying destinies right there in your front and nobody knows about it. Many of us see graf uh, graffiti on the wall. And you never understand why is it that they always draw the graffiti. The person who drew graffiti in Brazil was not the one who drew the graffiti in New York. But the graffiti in New York looks similar to the one in Brazil. They always have something that looks like an arrow at the end, at the, at, at the, uh, at the tail of it. There's something that always looks like an arrow. And in that book, Rebecca Brown said, it is a will of the satanist trying to tell their members their temple where they are. Many of us think that in Africa, they don't have a temple. They fly at night. They have to wait till night to fly to a dark place to meet. In North America, they don't wait. They actually use, thank God, God uh, re revealed it to one of our members. The most are used as a cooking venue. So don't think the devil, they don't have time to be flying to in one tree. They don't have time for trees. They are meeting to sit down on the chairs you, you thought you were sitting down on. And these are some of the things we need to understand. Today is not a day to talk about demonology, to talk about uh, the devils and his works, but these are the things where we need to understand that there are powers that are working. You are not American, does not mean you should stop praying. I was working in a place, one of the, uh, my boss was known as a witch. And one night she came to me and she said, she was talking to somebody that said, it is only three of us that know what is happening in here. Me, you, and Abayomi. When she said it, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I called my father the next day. I said, well, witch said only three people know what is going on here. Me, I don't know. I'm not a witch. My, my father explained. You are not, she knows that there's something different about you. She can see that there's something that is different about you. 
she cannot you does not know maybe she thinks you are on a different plane on a different power and that's why she thinks she knows that there's only three people that have eyes here every other person is blind she knows and to be honest when she was saying in my mind i'm like uh, yeah i don't know because to me i just come to work i do everything some people will say they go to a place that the head will swear me I, I, you know because you pray before you go there so i don't get frightened i'm sure maybe they have tried many things and they see that this one is can't be scared. This one cannot be manipulated. And that's why she said there are only three people. She's count herself as one. And she, was, she, calls her, she tells everybody she's a witch. And she said, I'm the second one. And the third person is the third one. And my mind, I'm like, hey, I'm not part of you. And then I was not a pastor. I was still very young. That was like 14, 15 years ago. I pray God we help us in Jesus' name. But what I just want to bring from all this is this. We must understand that there's something ahead of us. Knowing, you must know that there's something better. Brothers and sisters, you are married, but there's something better than just being married. There are people who are married and they are in, they are, their marriage is, comes with punches. Your own marriage can be a, a life of bliss. Some people have children and they have to start watching them morning, afternoon, night. But your own child can be like Samuel, who served God from his youth. There are people who have wealth, and yet that wealth they're using to cure disease. Their child have disease, and this one have disease, that one have disease. But you can have wealth, and yet you're using it only for God. No disease. There's something better ahead. The promise that makes us know that we're ten times better than our mates. That we in our camp, that there will be no disease. That is what we need to know. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Number four, a step by which we can attain um, this greatness is faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 9 to 10. I'm going to try and round up very soon. Amen. Hebrews 11, 9 to 10. By faith, he made his home in a promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac Jacob, who were heirs with, with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundation, whose architect and builder is God. That's what Abraham was looking forward to. He had faith that he knew that something better ahead. Faith is one ingredient that we need to attain what God has in store for us. When people are saying there's a casting down, you are looking ahead saying there's a lifting up. It's faith. When you, when imagine Abraham was called a mighty prince in the land. In the book of Genesis chapter 23 verse 6, he was called a mighty prince. And yet the Bible said he did not consider this place his own. He was looking forward to something better. That's the kind of God we serve. And that's why we need to have faith. Where, yes, you have, God has established you, but you're still looking forward to greater things. Some people are paying 10% of the tithe and they think they have arrived. And I heard, I, I didn't come, I, I don't, I, I, I have not confirmed it yet, that there's a man called Rockefeller that paid 90% of his tithe. And he was considered the richest man in his time. He was giving the church 90% and he kept only 10% to himself. And that 10% made him the, one of the wealthiest men. And yet, you give only 10%. You are even living on 90. And you are still saying, oh, I'm, I'm rich. When somebody else lived only on 10. And he's saying he's wealthy. Faith can propel you to a place of greatness. Faith is the key that unlocks your tomorrow. Today. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28. Matthew 15. 21 to 28, a Canaanite woman. Jesus Christ said, I have come only to, I was sent only to the house of Israel, to the sheep, Lord sheep of Israel. Jesus Christ was not supposed to minister to any other person aside from the Israelites. But this woman was able to unlock her tomorrow, today, by faith. She came to Jesus Christ and said, I will take that which you, I know, it will come in two years, in three years after you die. But today I want it. By faith. And Jesus Christ said, Jesus Christ said, I've not seen such a faith in Israel. Faith was able to unlock our tomorrow today. And I pray the God of heaven will grant us grace and strength in Jesus' name. You might not, you might not have had any, maybe there's no one in your family that's been enlisted in the list of greatness. But by faith, you can unlock that door for yourself. Maybe there's no one that actually have a a joyful and, you know, a marriage that lasts long till the end in your family, in your generation. Everybody in your family, their father left them and their mother left them. 
or they was always fighting. But you can unlock peaceful marriage by faith. Perhaps there's never been anybody that has sufficiency in your family. It has always been hand to mouth, hand to mouth. By faith, you can unlock that financial breakthrough. Perhaps in your family, there's always somebody. You believe it during the, test, during the time of my test, of my waiting upon God. I began to think. I looked at my, my father's elder brother. There was somebody in his family that waited upon God for a child for many years. My, the second one, too. There was somebody in the family that waited for child for God, uh, waited on God for child for many years. You won't believe the devil was not telling me, you are the one in this family. I said, no. <laughs> me, I must have child, though. Those ones might not have had their own, but me, I must have my own. For my own body, I must have my own. The devil was trying to say, there's always somebody in each family that will be childless. But I said, no, I refuse it. Brothers and sisters, we can unlock our tomorrow today by faith. Even when the doctors have said, even I, I'll tell you, the doctor told me, forget that, in 2010, the doctor told me, in Calgary, not that in Nigeria, not that the doctor, not that if, if, it was, if somebody had told me in Nigeria, I would have said, he didn't, go to, he didn't do his uh, medical school properly. It is a doctor in Canada. Told, he, he did not even tell me that uh, there's any option. He said, there's no, just forget about having children. Just go and enjoy yourself. A doctor told me, just go and enjoy yourself. <laughs> and that day, I'm like, no, I can't, I can't enjoy myself. I'm carrying my own children. The clothes my ch- child is wearing today, some of them, we bought them 10, 12 years ago. Some of them, we bought them since that time. But because we knew and we were persistent. There are times they will say, just give it away. Give it away. The day when, if, he come, if he comes, then you buy a new one. I'm like, no, I'm not giving it away. This, I remember there's a pair of shoes who I keep on my, uh, in my closet a, for boy and a girl. I always keep it there, blue and red. I know that we will wear it one day. That shoe is older than him, 12 years older than him himself. But I pray to God of heaven, we help us in Jesus' name. Number five way by which we can unlock what's ahead of us, to take hold of what's ahead of us, is worship. That Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28 that we read, that I quote, just quoted, that woman worshipped Jesus Christ. He, he honored him, he worshipped him. And that which nothing could give to her. What prayer cannot give to you? What fasting cannot give to you? Worship give to her. She worshipped the Lord and the God of heaven gave to her what was deserved. David he was a better king and his kingdom was established beyond that of Saul because David Worshiped God. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 21. David made it clear there. Let's read Second Samuel 6, 21. So David said to Michal, Yes. It was before the Lord. It was before the Lord. Who chose me instead of your father? Yes. And all his house. Yes. To appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord. Yes. Over Israel. Yes. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. Amen. Because of the way I worship God. That God said, I see a man after my own heart. That is why God has established me and bore your father. That's why he has made me to unlock great things. Your father can only reign for a few times, and nobody else will reign after him. But me, God is giving me that all, all as long as Israel exists, that there will never be anyone that, that, the, that the king will not cease from my, from, my, from my throne, from my family. That is what worship can do. Because of our time, number six, the last one, you must actually take a deliberate action in trying to reach forward for what you are looking for. Let's read Matthew chapter 13, verse 46, and also Proverbs 12, 12 27. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price. Yeah, man. This when, man found that pearl, that found that vision, found that thing that he's looking for. And what did he do? And went and sold all that he had. He and sold bought everything it. That he had and he bought it. He took a deliberate step to sell all to take hold of that thing. What is that thing that you are looking God for, you are asking God for? Some people will say, I want a peaceful marriage. And you have not learned to deal with your mouth. <laughs> no matter that marriage will not be peaceful. You say you want to have success. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 17. Many of us will say, I want God to bless me. You know, I want to have abundance. And you know, you've not learned to curb your excessiveness. That word will not come. It's not a curse. Let's open uh, Proverbs 21, 17. 
He who loves pleasure. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. Amen. Let's say it again. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. You want to buy the, 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 the designer cloth every time. You can never have anything. It's not a curse. Yes, you will have the designer clothes. The Bible said there's one that pretends to be poor and yet have a servant. But there's one that pretends to be rich and have no food to eat. Yes, he has his well a gold watch, Gucci shoes, um, Louis Vuitton glasses. He's all balling. But when you ask him, show us your account. It's minus, not even zero, minus. And now I look back, I remember when I was in Toronto, I was earning $6.50. And I, I went to buy a Timberland of over $200. How much did we buy? We all bought one each. Timberland of over $200. And then we were, I was only earning $6.50. Then if you ask me, bring $1. I don't have $1. But I have a Timberland of $250. $250. And that's why I could not have money. If I want to buy 10 Timberlands, like now I can buy them. But I don't have, I don't have, I'm not going to buy it. That's why I, that's why I walk into the store. I, one day we walked, I walked into the coach and I saw one bag. They put $700. I even looked at the bag. I'm like, what is this one? <laughs> $700 for what? What did you put inside? If I buy a wallet of $700, how much am I going to put in the wallet? I better put million inside it. But you don't buy $700, $750 wallet. And you don't have money to put inside. Don't you think something's wrong with you? He that loves wine and oil can never be rich. We must make deliberate action to want to reach forward. Brothers and sisters, there's great things ahead of you. For the, the children in our midst and for those who are watching online, you, you are praying that I want to be the next Kobe Bryant. I want to be the next um, Ronaldo. I want to be the next... Uh, uh, what's that man that plays... Um, um, Tiger Woods, or the one that plays um, baseball, uh, the black one in the 60s. Um, something, is, uh, his name sounds like a girl's name. Rosemary, no, I forgot his name. He, he, you need to apply yourself. You're praying that God will make you a doctor. You ask him, what do you want to be? I want to be a doctor. Then start studying. Don't play Shinobi Striker all day, all night. You need to start studying. You need to take hold of it. If you play Shinobi Striker day and night, you're not going to be a doctor. You're going to be a Shinobi Striker player. Who makes no money? I pray God we help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The truth is this, we need to take deliberate actions. Even for we adults, we are, we are we're telling ourselves. Pastor Deboye gave a testimony. He was saying, God bless me, bless me. And God said, are you really ready for this blessing? He said, yes. And what God did was, he now brought people, pupils to him, to him to start studying. And he was not telling God, God, this is too much work. He said, are you, are you not the one who wants to be rich? You want to be rich? Do the work. Many of us want to be rich, but we don't, we don't want to do the work. You must take deliberate reaching, deliberate actions to want to reach that goal. In the year 2022 and beyond, it's not a time for you to allow that vision to remain in your head. Maybe this, the first thing you need to do is start writing them down. And start making step by step way on how to attain it. You want to be financially free, independent by the end of the year. Write it down and tell yourself, what do I need to shelf from my life? What enjoyment do I need to take out? What do I need to cut from myself to make sure that by December I am here? If you're telling yourself that I want to have A's in my classes, how much time am I giving to my school now? And how much time do I need to give for me to attain that A? And for those who are working, oh, yes, you are working one job. Yes, I know that some of us, we need to rest, yes. But Bible said, walk while it is day, for night is coming when no man can not work. A time will come when you can't do that thing anymore. If I tell my father right now to go and do work now, <laughs> I'm sure he can't do it anymore. But in his time, he did all he could do. And, now, and honestly, and that was one, one of my driving goals when I was young, I remember when I came to, I told, I've always told people, if my father did not come to North America before me, I would have returned back to Nigeria and tell everybody, don't come to North America. Because honestly, there were times I cried at the bus stop. My ear, I thought if I didn't do like this, I thought it would fall off. So cold, I cried. 
And the only thing that did not make me go back was because I remember my father said he was doing three jobs. That he will look at, he will, he will look at one straight road and say, I'll sleep from here to there. And we'll just close his eyes. And he'll be sleeping as he's walking. As soon as he gets there, we wake up. And it's okay. Now, the next one is here. Yeah, I'll sleep from here to there. Because he wanted to succeed. And he did it. So when I was not doing my own, and I told myself, I've not told myself I'll sleep from here to there. So this, that means I can still do more. And honestly, if I was the first person that came to North America in my generation, I would have gone back to tell them that, don't go there. That place is hard. Though. Because it was hard. It was hard. But we thank God for where we are today. Let's open our Bibles to Exodus in, in closing. Exodus chapter 23, 29 to 30. I will not drive them out I from before drive them you out. Yes. in one year. Yes, I will not drive them out before you in one year. Lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Yes. Little by little. Yes. I will drive them out from before you. Yes. Until you have increased. Yes. And you inherit the land. Amen. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, God does not give you all the blessing in one day. God cannot give you all the blessing you, you think you're going to possess in life in one day. He said it here. I will not give to them all the land in one year. Otherwise, it will become too big for them and they will not be able to manage it. But when you start, to, to, today God gave you this one. He wants to be able to know how to master this one. So by the time the bigger one comes tomorrow, you'll be able to manage it. A man who cannot manage 1,000 cannot manage a million. A man who saw $1,000, I was telling people, hey, hey. Uh, what do you normally say? Levels and uh, I have elevated. The day you see one million, his head will think that he's not the same anymore. He will start slapping people all around. And if they start suing him, that one million is gone. Because I've heard some people say, if I have money, I'll just go to my boss and give my boss a dirty slap. Do it. That one million that you thought you have will be what you will pay your, your boss. Because you thought you arrived, you went to slap your boss. <laughs> he will sue you and get everything back. At least in North America. The God of heaven has great things for us. So whatever you think you are, it's because God knows that you cannot possess all he has for you today. And that's why he's giving you to you small by small. He's saying, take one at a time. Then I will give you more again. So now I just want to remember, there's more ahead. Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 10, it said, either is faithful in little. We'll be faithful in much. Either is dishonest in little, will be dishonest in much. So you must show yourself faithful and say, God, I know there's more ahead of me. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. I just want to bow our heads and pray. Brothers and sisters, during some past few weeks, I know of a man, he has been asking God for a child for the past decade, and he has been praying that, God, I want my first children to be twins. But God gave him one. And that man now said, but I thank you that you only give me one, not two. Because I see the, how many work I'm doing for just one. Three people, it took three people to clean one child's butt. One child. Three people are cleaning one child. Imagine they are two children. How are you going to manage it? But God, this man, after he has done that, he's now saying, God, I'm not, now I've seen how to prepare for one. Now I'm ready for two. Because he knows two are coming ahead. I just want us to begin to pray. I say, God of heaven, the grace, O oh Lord, to be able to prepare and take hold of what you have ahead of me. Give to me, Lord, in Jesus' name. The psalmist said, he said, two things I ask of you, O oh God, do not deny me before I die. He said, do not, give, do not let, let no lies be found on my lips. That is the first thing he prayed for. The second one is, he said, do not give me the wealth that I will, I will become so full that I will say, where is God? That is not even, and the second part of that prayer is, do not make me, do not take me to the kind of poverty that will make me to steal and bring shame to your name. I just want to just begin to pray. I say, oh God of heaven, the grace to take hold of what is ahead, give to me, Lord, in Jesus' name. The grace to grasp what you have given to me, oh God, give to me, Lord, in Jesus' name. That I will not give up, oh God. And even as I attain this thing, give me the mindset to know that there's better and there's better ahead, Lord, in Jesus' name. The mindset of God to say, oh God, God, I take hold of it, I receive now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this, so God, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Our Father, and I want to thank you, God, for the word we have heard today. Take hold of what is ahead. And I pray, God of heaven, that for everyone that has heard this word today, 
We will empower them, O oh God, with the ability to take hold of what you have ahead for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. That wherever they have seen themselves today, that it will be the least they have seen in the name of Jesus. That greater things you will do in their families, Lord, in Jesus' name. That they will go from glory to glory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Their path will be like a shining light that keeps getting brighter and brighter to the day of perfection, Lord, in Jesus' name. That their testimony will not be that, oh, when I was young, I was wealthy. But the testimony will be that even now, I'm wealthier than when I was in my 40s, in Jesus' name. Thank you for this, O God, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we are praying.